we are talking about wedges and more specifically uh, using a wedge to overcome tree lean angle now if you're not familiar with what a wedge is uh, it's a real simple machine that people use when they're cutting down trees and doing other things related to wood cutting and whatnot uh, they're a real simple machine you know they're triangular in shape um, come in a lot of different lengths you know five and a half you know 10 12 inches and all that um, usually about three inches wide um, they're either made out of metal or some type of hard plastic I prefer hard plastic over the metal that way if the wedge is in my cut and I'm cutting with the saw I don't damage the chain uh, if I hit the wedge now when you're uh, using wedges to cut down trees uh, there's two basic functions there's other functions but the two basic functions are a or number one I should say to keep your bar from getting pinched and two to overcome lean angle now if you're not familiar with wedges uh, for tree cutting and whatnot and lean angles and things like that Basically what I'm saying is if here's our tree real horrible and we need to get it to this spot again it looks I think it's more of a dandelion than a tree anyway if we need to get it here we need to move the crown of the tree a certain distance and we do that you know you can you can use a felling lever or you can use a felling a wedge but you drive the wedge into your into your cut and try to move the crown of the tree over uh, incidentally this uh, distance right here I refer to as crown movement and we'll need to know that for later all right so like I said there's other uh, there's other uses for wedges when you're cutting down trees but for this video we're gonna mainly well actually we're gonna talk about overcoming lean angle uh, if you use wedges for different purposes when you're cutting down trees feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment section. All right, so, you know, when we're getting ready to cut our tree down, you know, we're not sitting there trying to do it as fast as we can because obviously, you know, the speed at which you cut, which you cut trees down does not determine whether or not you're good at it, right? You, you know, if you watch, uh, you know, the real uh, skilled fellers, you know they don't do things as fast as they can they they do them as thoughtful as they can I would say um, so when you're getting ready to cut down your tree um, you size up the tree now specific to this topic is um, how do you know that you can overcome your lean angle uh, using a wedge now if you don't have that intuition, because I'm sure somebody who does this for a living can just look at the tree and say, oh yeah, that's not a big deal. But for a lot of us, we have to really think about it. And believe it or not, you can actually uh, get a pretty good idea by just using math. All right, so before we get into it, there's a few things, uh, a few terms that we have to know or be familiar with. So first off, let's draw our wedge. And we like orange plastic wedges here. All right, so the, the two uh, things we are going to be concerned about um, are wedge height, or WH, and length, L. Now, for overcoming lean angle, you know, length comes into to play, you know, obviously on smaller trees we only have so much distance we can drive a wedge in right if we have a six inch diameter tree we're not going to use a we, well we could i suppose we could use a 12 inch wedge if we bore out the the hinge wood but um you know the other thing is is uh a, a longer wedge is easier to drive in than a shorter wedge because the the slope uh isn't is is severe you know it's much more gradual so it's easier to drive in but for calculation purposes what we're really concerned with is uh, wedge height the next thing we need to do or know is 
the height of our tree. Okay. Now, obviously, we're we're uh, we're going to estimate the height of our tree in feet, where we look at the wedge height in inches. So eventually, we're going to have to have common units, whether feet or inches. And I can tell you right now that uh, it's a lot easier to to work everything in inches. Um, and then you're going to need to know or estimate the amount of crown movement you need to get the tree to the pivot point. And then lastly, you're going to need to know, or estimate I should say, You're going to need to know the distance from the back of the tree to the front of the hinge wood. All right. And again, all these dimensions will eventually have to be in inches. Because when you do calculations, all your numbers have to be same units. All right. So, for instance, um, let's say we have, a, we, we have a crown movement of three feet. Okay. We need to move a tree's crown three feet to the pivot point. Let's say our wedge height is one inch, our uh, tree is 100 feet tall, and the distance between the uh, back of the tree and the front of the hinge wood is uh, 12 inches. Now, well, first thing we need to do is we need to take um, our height and convert 100 feet into inches, and you simply do that by multiplying by 12, which gives you 1,200 inches. All right. So what is the maximum crown movement or the approximate maximum crown movement that we can move this tree with a one inch high wedge? All right, here it is. So crown movement is approximately, and that's what these two squiggly lines mean, um, the wedge height times the tree height divided by the distance from the back of the tree to the front of the hinge wood. All right, so let's plug our numbers in. We have a one inch tall wedge one, times 1,200 inch tall tree divided by 12 inches from the back of the cut, or the back of the tree I should say, to the front of the hinge wood. That equals um, 100 inches, right? Okay, so in feet, to convert inches to feet, you divide by 12. So 100 inches divided by 12 equals approximately eight and one third feet. So if we had a crown movement of three feet required to hit the pivot point and our maximum crown movement with our one inch tall wedge with a hundred foot tree and 12 inch distance would give us eight and a third. Shouldn't be a problem, right? Um, let's say for instance, we had a different height tree, right? How does height affect the crown movement? Well, all things being equal, let's change our tree. So I'll erase 100 feet and we'll change that to 70 feet, okay? Well, we need to convert 70 feet into inches. So we multiply by 12, that gives us 840 inches. So let's plug our numbers in. So we'll have a one inch wedge height times an 840 inch tall tree with a 12 inch distance and that will give us uh, 70 inches which we divide 70 by 12 and that equals 5.8 feet so again if we needed a crown movement of 3 feet with a 70 foot tall tree 1 inch wedge height 12 inch diameter we should be able to do it all right but what you can see here is the height of the tree will shorten all things being equal, the amount of crown movement. Um, now, let's go back to our first example with our 100 foot tall tree. Um, but let's say, for instance, we have a tree that's much bigger at the base. All right. So, how does the base of the tree affect how much crown movement? Oops, that's wrong. Actually, it was right. 100 feet. 
All right. So instead of a 12 inch distance, let's say we got a bigger tree at the base and we have a 20 inch distance. And let's say on this tree, we need a crown movement of say six feet, right? So we need to move it six feet. All right. So can we do it? So we take our 100 feet, we convert it into inches, that's 1,200 inches, and we plug in our numbers, and what we get is 1 inch times 1,200 inches time, or I'm sorry, divided by 20 inches. That is 60 inches, so 60 inches divided by 12 equals 5 feet. So obviously you can see with a 100 foot tall tree, a one inch wedge height, and a distance from the back of the tree to the front of the hinge wood, we're only gonna be able to move that crown a maximum of approximately five feet, but yet we need six feet. All right, so what do we do? Well, what if we changed our wedge height from one inch to two inches, right? So we stack our wedges. How will that help? Well, let's again plug our numbers in so we have a two inch wedge height times 1200 inches and 20 divided by 20 inch distance that equals uh, 120 inches 120 inches divided by 12 equals 10 feet so you can see by increasing by a factor of two our wedge height We've increased by a factor of two uh, our crown movement or the maximum crown movement. So 10 feet is much, much more than 6 feet, so we should be able to wedge that tree over. Um, so hopefully, you know, this is a, a quick little um, demonstration of the physics behind uh, tree wedges, or wedge, I'm sorry, wedges and wedging trees over. You know, obviously... Uh, trees wedging and tree cutting and all that's dangerous but i just thought you know this is something that i find you know uh, people i cut with you know sometimes they'll say if i knew what i was doing i'd never have to touch a wedge which is funny because again you watch all the really quality fellers and they always have you know five six seven wedges sitting in pouches all over their body and they're always slapping them in trees so Anyway, um, like I said, hopefully this helps. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any other tips and tricks for folks, you know, using wedges when they're cutting down trees, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Thank you.